37. Last week we started talking about waiting on the Lord. We said the word wait means to stay or be inactive until someone comes or something happens. Number two, to look forward. Number three, to act as a servant, to wait, to act like a servant. And number four is to serve. And surely all four of those definitions work here and all four definitions are applied. We talked about last week in verse three, trust in the Lord. Waiting means trusting the Lord. That means you put your faith in him, not in other people, not in yourself, not in things, but you put your faith and trust in the Lord. Number two, we said waiting means obeying the Lord. In other words, while you're trusting, you're obeying. You're not sitting there fumbling your fingers and worrying yourself to death. You get up and you go ahead and you serve the Lord. You obey him. You, you do what he's asked you to do, how he's asked you to do it. Now, verse number four tonight, waiting means delighting in the Lord. Waiting means delighting in the Lord. Now, does anybody need any books? Real quick, uh, Brother Mike. They're on the front row here. Just hold your hand up real high if you need a book. I'm sorry, I meant to do this before I started. I got to go in without thinking. Just hold your hand up real high and he'll be glad to get you a book. Wendy needs one here. Well, number three, waiting means delighting in the Lord. Verse four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. The word delight means great pleasure in joy and gladness. Great pleasure in joy and gladness. So in other words, you can be happy while you're waiting on the Lord. Now, I've been married almost 30 years, getting closer every year. And there's only one thing I have to say I had to learn to do I didn't like to do. That's waiting for her to get ready. Wait, wait, wait. I'm always in a hurry and she's never in a hurry. And uh, she's got to have the makeup on, got to have the jewelry on. And sometimes she changes clothes four times before we get out the door. And I have to wait. <laughs> I have to wait. And I am not happy while I'm waiting. I was sitting in the car at night, womp, 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 wondering where in the world is she at? I'm ready to go. I was not happy. But the Bible says when you wait on the Lord, <laughs> you better be delighting in the Lord while you're waiting on him. I can't say I was thinking good things while I was blowing that horn. I need to confess that before we have communion tonight. I can promise you that. I got to confess that. You get up there too. Don't you point your finger at me. Huh? You remember every time you point at somebody, three more fingers is pointing back at you. Amen. Praise God. Anyway. <laughs> But uh, we gotta learn to delight while we're waiting on the Lord. In other words, don't be grumpy. Don't be agitated. Don't be aggravated. Uh, don't be impatient. That's easy preaching, hard living. First of all, in Psalm 16, one, delighting in his worthiness while you wait. Understand who you're waiting on is not gonna let you down. Who you're waiting on is not gonna throw you under the bus. Anybody ever had somebody throw you under the bus? I've had them throw me under the bus, run over top of me, and then back up for good measure. Say amen. Uh, but the Lord won't throw you under the bus. He won't throw you away. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm 16, 1, preserve me, O God. Now look, there's a difference between preserves and pickles. <laughs> preserves is full of sugar, sweetness. Pickles is full of vinegar. And I like them both. I'd rather have preserves, but right now when you're on a diet, all you can have is the pickles. Say amen. There ain't no carbs in pickles, unless they're sweet pickles, and you ain't supposed to have those. But preserve me, make me sweet, O oh Lord, while you're holding on to me, while you're leading me, help me be sweet. For in thee do I put my trust. O oh, my soul, Thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom all is all my delight. In other words, it's not about you. When we learn to live and not make it all about ourselves, we'll be a lot happier. We think when we're selfish we're happy, but we're not, because you're never satisfied. You're never going to be satisfied. Let's just get over ourselves. You're never going to be happy uh, in and of yourself. 
But I've learned I can be happy in the Lord and be satisfied. I can be happy in God and be satisfied with what he's doing if I trust him. Because I've learned he doesn't make a mistake. He's worthy. He's worthy of my trust. He's never let me down. He's never lied to me. He's always been honest with me. He's always worked miracles for me. He's always done far above all I could ask or think. That's the reason I know he's worthy. That's the reason I come in every week and print a prayer list. Not so we can have to buy paper and pay Jason's salary at the copy place. No, that's not why we print a prayer list. We print a prayer list because we believe we sit down and pray for these names that God's going to hear and answer our prayers. But if you're just reading a list, it ain't going to ever happen. You've got to pray for these people and believe God's going to do for them what they cannot do for themselves and do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And when you see God work miracles, it helps you believe that he can do more miracles and do greater. He's worthy of our trust. He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to let you down. Now B, delighting in his will while you wait. Not only is he worthy, but his will is right. We may not understand it. We may not want to accept it. But his will is right. And his purpose is pure. His perfect his purpose is perfect. His purpose is prepared. His purpose is full of promises. And you have to believe and delight in his will even if it is not your will. I have to say, in my first pastorate, I made the statement, y'all may have heard me say this, when somebody, that I was in school and there's two or three preachers that preached to this church, trying to take this church, and they said, oh, you gonna go preach and see if you can get it? I said, I wouldn't preach at that church. If somebody give me a million dollar a year salary, guess who ended up being a pastor? Be careful, big old mouth, what you say. Be careful, big old mouth, what you say. You may run up your bill, and it may run you down the hill, so you better watch big old mouth what you say. Because <laughs> God has a sense of humor, and his will is not always what you want. I wanted to go to my home church, work on staff, be a fat cat. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with them old people. God said, no, you're going over here first. And I went over there and spent five years. I called it boot camp. I learned a whole lot in that boot camp. Five years of boot camp. Then one day, here comes Earl over in my office. You ever thought about being the senior adult pastor at Temple? I said, I've been waiting five years. Where have you been? Uh, God's will. You have to wait. Timing has got to be right. Timing is everything. You can do the right thing at the wrong time and be ruined. You can do, hear what I said now? You can do the right thing, but do it at the wrong time and be ruined. Timing is everything, and God's will is timing. You have to wait on the Lord for his timing. I told somebody one time, I was about 23, 24 years old, I said, I've done 50 weddings. I'm always the preacher and never the groom. It's all in timing. He was all in timing. 26 years old, went to a revival meeting. There she sat in the choir. I elbowed the guy next to me, the preacher next to me. I said, that'd make a good preacher's wife up yonder. Next thing you know, they done got us at Hardy's and then put her in one corner, me in the other, and then took off and left us. And I ain't not ever got rid of her since. Y'all are dead crap. God's will has got to be the center of our trust. He knows what's best for us. We don't know what's best. I'm so sick of these Christians telling me, I feel and I think. God didn't call you to feel, and God didn't call you to think. He called you to trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey because look ask Jonah I call it the Jonah syndrome Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh where did Jonah end up in Nineveh you know where you end up right where God wants you and so you might as well delight in the Lord and delight not only that he's worthy but delight in his will now see Delight in his word. How do you find his will? By staying in his word. Delight in his word while you wait. In other words, if you don't know what to do, just get in the book and read till he tells you what to do. Just keep reading the Bible till he shows you. Just keep praying till he shows you. I can't tell you how many times I felt like I was stuck in the mud and I was reading my Bible and God, just the light bulb, come on, beep. 
But if I hadn't have been reading that Bible, I'd never found the answer. You got to study his word. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 16, I will what? Delight myself in thy statutes and I will not forget thy word. Let me tell you something, folks. Not, sometimes you're not going to find the answer in reading your Bible. The light bulb's not going to come on. It's not going to always happen. Sometimes it's doing what the Bible, while you're doing what the Bible tells you to do along the way, you find the answer. But if you won't do it, what the Bible told you to do along the way, you'd never find the answer. So you have to not only read your Bible, but you've got to obey your Bible. You've got to delight in his word. Delight in his word is more than just reading it. It's doing what it says to it. Being Having faith in what God says enough to obey him. He's worthy. His will is right. His word will lead you. D. Delighting in his way while you wait. Look at Psalms 119.35. Make me, make me, make me. <laughs> How many of y'all God has had to make you do something you didn't want to do? If you ain't raising your hand, you need to be at this altar repenting because you lied. Because we are all rebellious as an old goat on the little house on the prairie. Y'all remember Fred the goat? He was always butting everybody. He even got the preacher. I liked it when he got Ms. Olson. I kind of enjoyed that. But, you know, old Fred was rebellious. Let me tell you something, folks. Sometimes God's got to make you do what you don't want to do. And it hurts. And it don't feel good. But it's what's best for you. It's what's best for you. And, folks, I'm telling you, you just got to trust him. He's making you go down that road to make you a better servant a better Christian and a better child of God. So you have to wait on, or you have to delight in his way. Um, look at, I skipped a verse, didn't I? I'm going to read it anyway. Psalm 1-2, go backwards, Ken. Psalm 1-2. But delight in his law, the law of the Lord, and the law that he meditate day and night. Then uh, we said delight in his way. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments. God's word is set, folks. I'm sorry. They can come out with the NIV, the NOV, any other kind of OV and V what they want to. The word of God is set. And we gotta follow it as it's written. As he's put it. We can't change the direction of the word of God. His way is set. And you have to delight in his way, the why you can't change God's way of doing things. That's why I preach what I preach Sunday morning. I'm gonna finish it this coming Sunday morning. I'm sorry, these new temples, they're trying to change the way we do things. And you cannot change God's way of doing things. Oh, just try making these two or three changes and it'll be yeah, it'll make your church grow. You'll have every vermin and every snake in the country up in your church. Every kind of ism, schism, and ite you can find. Why? Because these change of the rules and changes of the ways, they start allowing things to happen that, that should not happen. You have to stay in the way. Somebody said, preacher, you're old-fashioned. You need to change. I ain't. I ain't. I'm not. If you want better English, I'm not. I, look, the way is set. The way is set, we've got to follow his way. Now, number E, delighting in his worship while you wait. Look at Proverbs 8.30. Then I was by him, by his side, where he is. Now, let me make something clear to you. That's written in the Old Testament before the Holy Spirit came. I want you to know the Holy Spirit's with you everywhere you go, good or bad. He's there and he ain't going nowhere. He's not going anywhere. The question is, are you listening to him or is he having to listen to you? Are you following his direction or are you trying to run your own party while he's there? That's dangerous. Be by his side. What does it say? As one brought up with him and I was daily his delight. Didn't say that God was his delight. He said I was daily his delight. 
This reminds me when I was a kid. I, I guess it was just the way I was raised. I don't know. But if I was down at Ruby's and Tom's staying there during the summer, I did everything I could to make Ruby happy. I did everything I could, though it was hard sometimes and I had to bite my tongue. Everything I could to make Tom happy. It was easier to make Ruby happy than it was to make Tom happy. I tried to do everything I could to make my grandma, Havana, happy. I did everything I could to make my granddaddy, Dolly C, happy. Even if it meant running a tire down the middle of an aisle and back while we were sewing beets. He could raise beets like nobody else. He had a secret. You just lay that seed on top, roll that tire down, roll that tire back, and just get that seed far enough down the bird couldn't see it, and then that thing would take root. He'd have seed, I mean, beach as big as my fist. I ain't never seen some beach in my life. He knew how to do it, and I did everything I could to make him happy. Why? Because I loved him, and I appreciated what they did for me. Ruby cooked good for me. Tom took me to the ball game every night so we could watch softball. Bought me ice cream. I liked it. Granddaddy grew them vegetables that were so good in that garden. I enjoyed going up there sneaking every once in a while and eating a raw tomato. Say amen or oh man. Just go out there in the tomato patch and just eat that thing. Say amen. I'd sneak Ruby's salt shaker out in my pocket so I could put a little salt on that thing. Eat it out there in the garden while I was out there. Hey, he, he was good to me. He was good to me. Every once in a while, Hey, Vanna would go to her drawer and pull her drawer open, pull her pocketbook and slide me a $5 bill. Back in them days, $5 bill was a whole lot of money, my friend. I'll tell you, I loved Hey, Vanna. But they were good to me, and that's why I want to be what? Good to them. God's been good to you whether you know it or not. And we ought to be his delight. We ought to be trying to make him happy. That's what I'm trying to say. We ought to be trying to make him, we ought to be the delight of his eye, the delight of his life rejoicing always before him always bragging on him always God needs to hear how good he is you don't need to always hear how bad things are he knows how bad things are he knows how bad you got trust me he knows your every ache he knows where your spurs are <laughs> he knows where your back ache is he, he knows every problem you got but what he may not know is that you love him. He needs to hear that. He longs to hear that. He knows, but he longs to hear it. He wants to hear you say it. He wants to hear you sing at Calvary, at the cross. Oh, listen, he wants to hear your voice pray. He wants to hear you reading his word, listening to his voice. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 2, Yet they speak me, seek me daily and delight to know my ways. Do you know how Ruby knew I liked her? Every time she opened the door there, I stood. Mama Gertrude, you know how she knew I loved her? Every Sunday night, every other Sunday night, I was going to pull up in her driveway at that door. She'd open the door and I'd stand. I liked being with them. I loved my grandparents. I love him with all my heart. I love Ruby. I love Tom. And I want to be where they were all the time. That's what this verse said about God. Now, don't break your arm and pat yourself on the back and hurt yourself. Pat yourself on the back tonight. You're here because you love him. You're here tonight because you want to pray to him. You want to hear from him. And he looked down and he said, look there. They seek me daily. And delight to know my way. As a nation that did righteousness, folks, it pays to do what's right. It pays to do what's right. And forsook not the ordinances of their God. Not only did they not do what they weren't supposed to do, but they did what they were supposed to do. They crossed their T's and dotted their I's. You listen to some of these new agers today and they'll say, it's nothing wrong with living on the fence or living on the edge. That's a lie. There ain't no more dangerous place in the world to live than is on the edge or on the fence. You could lose your life in the snap of a finger, your spiritual life or your physical life, either one, by living on the edge, living on the fence. Then it says, they ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. 
Folks, we've got to learn to love to pray. You know what our verses are about this year? Starting this Sunday morning, it's on prayer. Every week we'll have a verse about prayer. What's on the back of your prayer list every week? Verses on what? We're trying to get you to fall in love with praying. Because it impresses God. Now, if I didn't get to go to Danville or get to go to South Boston, as long as I picked that phone up, I can still, I can still remember the numbers to this day. I call Ruby. I can't come, but I'm going to call and check on you. Ruby says, that's good as long as we're here from you. I call Gertrude in South Boston. Say, Mama, just call and tell you I can't come, but I'm going to check. She says, as long as I hear from you, I'm all right. They just want to hear your voice. Did you know God just wants to hear you pray? That might be all it takes to push him over the edge and do something great for you. Just pray. Sincerely. With love. Verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, that's the Lord's day, from doing thy pleasure on, the, on my holy day, and call the Sabbath day a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, <laughs> Not finding thine own pleasure or speaking thy own, thy own words. You know what that's saying? That means you go to church instead of going fishing. You go to church instead of going on a ride in the mountains to look at the leaves. It means you go to church instead of hitting the alarm clock and rolling over and taking another sneeze. I mean snore. Huh? Isn't that what it's saying? That's what it's saying. You put me first. You put me first. When you put God first and you talk to him and you're by his side, delighting in his worship while you wait. In other words, everything may not be going your way, but you're still going to church. I'll never forget as long as I live. There's a man who used to go to this church years ago. I've been here long enough now I can tell stories and y'all don't know what I'm talking about. There was a man in our church years ago. I went to visit him. Had, had missed church four weeks in a row. I walked in and sat down and said, we sure have missed y'all. Preacher, we got problems. When our problems are solved, we'll come back to church. They never come back to church. And they died still having their problems. They died still having their problems. I buried him. I buried him. That's, that's sad to have to do a funeral. Somebody you know died in their problems. They didn't die in victory. They died in defeat. But they couldn't come to church because they had to solve their problems. This verse right here said, even though you're in, in, in problems knee deep up to your nose, crawling up between your toes, ain't nothing going to stop you from going to church. Ain't nothing going to stop you from singing the songs of glory or praying the prayers of, of hope. Nothing's going to stop you from hearing the word of God. Why? Because you're delighting in his worship while you wait. Sometimes God just wants to see if you mean business or not. Sometimes he makes you wait just to see if you mean business. I know years ago, I'd ask my mama for something. And she wouldn't buy it. We could go by and tell mama, I want this again. She still wouldn't do it. Another week go by, I say, mama, I, I do want that. Back the fourth time, she'd finally do what I asked, but you know why she went to, she says, you change your mind like you change your underwear. You change your mind like you change your socks. You want this today and this tomorrow and that the next day and this, this. And she'd make, she'd keep, see if I kept coming back to it to know I meant business. She knew I meant business, okay, well, we'll see what we can do about it. I love y'all, but there ain't much difference between me and y'all. We change our mind like the calendar. We change our mind like the wind blows. Sometimes God just wants to see if you really mean business. In other words, he's going to make you hold out to see if you're going to stick to the stuff. Are you going to stay faithful? Are you going to stay committed? Are you going to stay consistent? What was that word you used the other night? Persistent. Are you going to be persistent? Because if you are, He'll give you the desires of your heart. What do we say? Delight thyself also in the who? Lord. And he shall give thee 
the desires of thine heart. I got to go to temple, worked there for eight years. Great, great time, eight years. Got to serve with my old buddies, my old, I had, I had 50 grandmas and grandpas. I had a life, man. If you want apple pie, it was a coconut cake. It was something all the time. I lived a high life. That's why I look like a look man. But you know what? God gave me the desire of my heart. I had to wait a while. I had to prove that I trusted him, believed he was worthy. I had to do his will before God did what I wanted. I had to delight in his word, read my Bible, preach the word, be faithful. I had to delight in his way, not my way. I had to follow his path and go the way he said go. And I delighted in his worship. I put him first and everything else comes second. And you know what? I'm kind of like my daddy. Old Carl Robertson's song says, if I died today, I've had a wonderful life. And you will if you delight in the Lord. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Father.